Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time that we can all come together as a student body to learn some useful things that are always applicable to the spread of the, of the gospel. So I pray now, Lord, please give us your Holy Spirit that I may speak clearly and the students may understand this important aspect of life, which is reading. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the topic is how to read. But I'm not going to teach you how to read because I assume that all of you know how to read, right? But there's a certain... Uh, there's some strategies that will help you to read for better comprehension and perhaps to even do it faster, right? Um, the verse that really came to my mind was Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I was reading this morning about um, the woman that washed Jesus' feet. And it's a chapter in, uh, it's chapter 9 in Matthew, and it's also, um, no, chapter 7 in Luke. And it's related stories are in chapter 8 and 9 of Matthew. And it's a part of the Bible that's talking about faith. How the woman that touched Jesus' garment, that her faith made her well. You know, and he's talking about the, um, also the woman, you know, woman, your faith did this, you know. And, and there's a story when Jesus goes and heals in his town, says that he, that, that he couldn't do many miracles because there's no faith, right? And people's faith increased as they heard Jesus speak. Now, we don't have Jesus speaking to us, but what is it that we have? The Bible. His words are recorded. So, by reading the Bible, faith cometh, right? Now, this strategy that I'm going to talk about is called, well, first of all, do you know what the symbol is? Nike. What's the, what's the no, slogan for Nike? Just, just do it. it. <laughs> Unfortunately, when it comes to reading, you cannot just do it. I mean, you can and wing it, try to wing it, and sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. I'm reading through Pastor Carl's dissertation. That's some um, intense stuff there. And you can't just do it, right? So, it's, this strategy is called Plan, Do, Review. Now, my students know what this means. Does anybody know the three stages of this strategy? Plan, do, and review. Very good. <laughs> See, your reading has already improved. All right? Now, this strategy is applicable to anything that you in life, virtually. Any test that you encounter. Because any test that you encounter, if you want to do a, a good job, you first you're going to plan what you're going to do. You're going to execute your plan. And you're going to then look back and say, okay, did it work? And if it didn't, you're going to go back to plan, do, review. Plan, do, and so, so when you're practicing, when I'm practicing violin, whatever, I plan, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this, and I hope to accomplish very good intonation. So I do it. And after I did it, I review it. Have I accomplished what I planned myself to do? No, it's still out of tune, so I got to plan a little bit better and then do it. So let's suppose that you're going to build a shed. You guys like that? That's in, in uh, San Francisco. It's a building there that has that jetting out of the wall. And, um, and you're like, oh, you know, whatever, I, I need a shed. You know? And you don't really put any thought into it. You go to Lowe's and you, got some, you get some lumber, right? Just enough, maybe a little bit extra, just in case. But you don't really know, you just get a few two by fours, 
one by six, get a few nails, and you hope that everything's gonna go well. And then you hope that it's gonna look like that. <laughs> right? That's your hope. But then, what's the reality? Does it look like that at the end, or does it look more like this? <laughs> Probably more like that, right? So, pay attention to this strategy. Plan, do, review. If you want to walk with anything out of the here today, walk with those three words. Plan, do, review. Plan what you're going to do. Do it. Review. Has it worked? Or did it work or did not? Go back to planning parts. Let's talk about the planning parts. The first thing when you come to reading, you guys are taking the pre-SAT today. I remember my days in public school those standardized test days. It's just as miserable for the teachers as it is for the students, trust me. Because, <laughs> especially in Texas, you, you can go to jail as a teacher for like even just walking around and reading the questions. You know, if they think that you are trying to help someone. It's crazy. But anyways, plan. Let's say you have a chapter in a book. The first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna preview the selection. What does that mean? You're going to read the title. What is it they're going to read about? And then you're going to go through and find the, all the subtitles. Ideally, if you're reading a textbook, and you, let's say you're, you, you, you are at a bookstore, which don't really exist anymore, and you're trying to see, is this book good or not? The best thing you can do is go to the table of contents and see all the chapters. What is it that the chapters are talking about? And then perhaps they might have more information. The subtitles inside of the chapter, little like headlines. Also, if you're looking for a, to buy a book about, I don't know, playing the ukulele, you want to make sure that the author knows how to play the ukulele, right? Otherwise, uh, he has no authority to tell you how to play the ukulele. So you want to also read about the author, and usually on a like, newspaper or something like that, it's going to have a little byline, which is like a short biography, and you read about that, because they'll help you understand his approach, you know? Um, let's suppose uh, Pastor Burgess, he, is, he knows a lot about Daniel. So if you see that there's an article written by him, and read his byline, you're going to say, okay, he might have a focus on prophecy. You see? So you kind of get yourself ready for that. So title, table of contents, subtitles about the author. Continuation. In smaller sections, the first paragraph will give you a summary. The first paragraph will give you a summary. So read that, and in there you should be able to get a gist of what's going to happen. Right? And also, finally, look for bold face or italic words. There's your highlighting key terms, especially in textbooks. You know, so you're, kinda, you're just previewing. You're not really reading it. You're just kind of going through and seeing, okay, how is this going to go? So part of planning. Second part, clarify why you're doing that. What is it that you want to have learned when you finish reading? I was just reading for general comprehension. I don't know, maybe you're reading about French Revolution, and I just kind of want to know, you know, kind of what happened. You don't really need to know the name of the generals or that there are two parties. You, no, that's not important. But perhaps that is. Perhaps you're going to take a test on it, and you need to know those things. So that's your purpose. Or you're just reading because you like reading, right? For the simple pleasure of reading your purpose. Prior knowledge, what is it they already know? And it's helpful for you to write quickly. What is it that you know about that topic already? All right? Now, plan, I'm gonna review plan. Where is it? There you go, preview the selection. Clarify your purpose for reading and activate prior knowledge. Those are the three main things of the planning parts. Preview, just go through quick, see what you know about it, and then see why you're doing that. Why are you reading that? The do part is only in two sections, really. 
You gotta see if you understand what you're reading. If you're just kind of going through, you know, my, it's, um, here's an example. I usually drive when I go to Hot Springs because if I sit on the passenger seat, I get kind of car sick, you know? And that means I also have to like serve the kids with books, with water, with this and that, you know? And I have to keep turning back. So I prefer to drive. And my wife then goes in the, in the, in the passenger seat. And then there was one day that she said, like, okay, I gotta go to Hot Springs, I'm gonna go get water, I'm gonna go to Kroger. I asked her, okay, good. Do you, do you know how to get there? No. But we've been there multiple times already. I said, yes, but I'm always in the passenger seats. I'm not paying attention. So a lot of times when you read, we are also in the passenger seats. The words are going by, you know, and we're thinking about, oh, wow, yeah, it's raining today. <laughs> right? We're, we're in the passenger seats. We're not engaged. And like, okay, there's a pothole on the road, you know, and oh, dear. You know, we're not doing that. And we need to do that. So how you do that? You gotta restate ideas in your own words. It's helpful to talk while you read. Restate ideas in your own words. In your own words. Don't just read the book aloud. Say the things that you say in your own words. Compare what you're reading to what you know. Does it make sense? What you know, is it matching what this person is saying? And ask questions. It's very important to monitor that you understand what you're reading. Uh-oh. What happened? Uh, there you go. All right. If you don't understand, stop and clarify. Ask for help. So... Define unfamiliar words. Man, as I'm reading Pastor Carl's dissertation, there's a lot of stuff there that are not very familiar to me. You have to stop and look it up. If there are graphics, maybe go back, because graphics usually help you understand. Also, something that's very helpful, read the paragraphs around. Try to get the uh, context of that. That might help you understand. And then finally, ask a friend. Ask a teacher, ask Google, you know, seek help. So review, monitor your comprehension. If you don't understand, stop. You got to stop. Like, you know, put the brakes on, e-brake, and clarify. Because if you just keep going, it's like a snowball. The more you don't understand, and then it just keeps getting worse and worse, and what is it that you're going to do? You're going to have to just put the book away. Because I'm done with this. All right? And then, final review. Answer questions about the selection. So perhaps at the end, there may be some questions. If you can answer those, that's a good sign. Test yourself. Get together in a group. Ask your friends about the stuff that you guys read. And then determine if you need to repeat the cycle. Do you need to read again? Do you need to plan again? Do you need to, to preview the selection again? And then, right there, recycle. All right? Then my appeal for today is apply it today. Especially if you're taking the PSAT. All right? All right, everybody. So, but remember, the most important about today, if you can walk away with one thing, remember, plan, do, review. Because that's going to help you in any uh, area of our life when it comes to doing something. Don't just do it. Because it seems like it's you know, the cool way of doing it, but it most likely ain't going to work. All right? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time to have together to think about a few things. And today was reading, and more very specifically, plan, do, review. You have a plan, Lord. You had your plan of salvation from the beginning of the times, and you executed this plan. 
But Lord, you are perfect and you did not have to review this plan. But Lord, we are not like you. We need your help. So I ask that please, as we engage in whatever activities, uh, we ask that you help us to execute them uh, well. Please be with us, especially students taking the PSAT today. Give them patience and wisdom. And the rest of us, that may be praying for them. In Jesus' name, amen.